low piccolo players. It's starting to be about that season, Stars and Stripes, and I'm going to go over the main famous solo. And in this video, I'm doing the band version. So it's in A flat major, um, which I think is a lot harder than the orchestra version, which is what I usually have to play, which is in G major. This one's harder because you always have to go up to the high A flats, which as we know is very a pesky note on the piccolo. Okay, so I'm going to just start playing it and I'll just stop and go as, as I go along and go over what I would do to drill it um, or any little tips or advice I have along the way. First off, feel free, I think, to leave out those three notes right before the solo starts. If that helps you to leave it out, leave it out. Even if you don't have to walk to the front of the stage or, or anything like that, I think that's totally acceptable. Okay, so here we'll get started. All right, I didn't get very far. <laughs> The high A flat, I forgot to mention. You have to use this alternate fingering for the high A flat or it really doesn't come out. I know some flute players that play occasional piccolo are very stubborn and just insist on using the standard traditional A flat fingering and just like force out that high A flat. And you could do that, uh, but it's a lot easier to use this alternate. It's just harder if you're not used to it but you just have to practice getting used to it. So the alternate fingering is, in the left hand, it's like regular high A flat. No thumb, no first finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky. And then with your pinky on the right hand as well, you're adding these two, the middle finger and the ring finger. It comes out a lot better. So you just have to practice, maybe without the trills, like that. You just have to practice going to that. You could also, um, for the A, going down to the middle A flat, you could just leave this here. I'll go real slow and see if you can see my right hand. So I just leave it down. I mean that middle A flat's a little flat with these on but doesn't matter. Okay so now I will get started for real. <laughs> One thing, I made a mistake, but I was thinking back. A D flat trill, I just wanted to go over these. I'm sure you're all good and this is the least of your problems, but the D flat trill going to E flat, both trill keys is the correct trill. And then the first trill, the E flat whole note there, these middle two are the, give you the best intonation going up to an F. Okay, so I'm just gonna start where I left off, uh, which is this D flat here. That's a very tricky. I got a little stuck in there myself. Basically, remember that those three, the, those three measures, those trills, just one wobble, one trill. It's all you have time for. Don't worry about trying to trill. And I kind of do a little, little bit of an accent just to get my fingers moving because sometimes they just don't move fast enough. So if I exaggerate, it would be like, Um, another thing in general, all these yetatatas, wherever they are, uh, the four eighth notes together, really need to be very short and tiny, not spreading the sound and blowing too much air. Um, that's gonna slow you down and it's very easy on the piccolo if you're blowing too much air through a tongued passage to trip over the notes. I would practice these three measures in slow motion and try to um, be very aware of the things I'm trying to do, which are play the eighth notes short, very short and tiny. Just exaggerate it while you're practicing and give a little punch, but not too much air, just a little punch on the one trill. And maybe a little faster. I would practice it a bunch of times like that with double tonguing, just tucka tucka tulla tucka tucka, and very tiny. Like I said, not not like that. That's gonna be messy when it's faster, and you get all tripped up and all spitty and everything. You just keep your airstream uh, like a little laser. Another way you can practice it is just one measure at a time plus downbeat. Do that a bunch if I just need to drill something. Okay, so I'm going to start there and then keep going. 
right there. I always like to do the second trill um, on the third quarter note. I think it just sounds good, but it's not written there, written there, so you don't have to. Okay, and then where I left off. Right here, I'm pretty sure that's a misprint, the fourth, eighth note. It should be a B flat. Um, although it's usually played like this quite a bit. Once I heard a recording with Boston Pops, they had it corrected to um, yeah, da, da, down a third. And so I just always play it like that. And I think it sounds more correct, like what it's probably supposed to be. Okay, I'm gonna start on the E natural. So this is where it's extra hard with those all those stupid A flats um, with coming from the trill. So the D flat trill, both trill, trill keys, and then you gotta get there. You just really have to do it. I know it's awkward to do this alternate fingering, but you just have to practice it. I would practice without the trills. I'm just going to that. You can make up an exercise where you're using this A flat. Maybe go start from B flat, right above the, uh, above the staff and do like you know and kind of similar to this um, but practice it without the trills for sure and then I've always done a trill on beats one and three and I'll just do that because I can I can't hardly stop myself from doing that because I've been playing this uh, piece for like 20 years or so um, but I think it sounds better this uh, if you can, but you don't have to do that, of course. Okay, I'm gonna run it. Hope it all goes well, <laughs> okay.